All right, we are live. What's going on, T-Shirt Millionaires? I'm Charles Smith III, the host of the T-Shirt Millionaires Live Show. And today, we have another special guest to end the week. We have Gavin St. George's. He is the founder and owner of SEPS.io. Gavin was in the printing industry on the print shop, and then he has recently opened up this new venture uh, to really help print shops with their artwork. And so I really want to get into Gavin's story. I know that there's a lot of pivoting going on. He was referred to me by a guy, Stan Banks, over at T-Shirt Side Hustle. And so as always, I know that this conversation is going to be informational as well as inspirational. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get into this conversation with Gavin uh, St. George's of seps.io. All right, what's going on, T-Shirt Millionaires? I'm Charles Smith III, the host of the T-Shirt Millionaires Live Show. And Gavin, what's going on, brother? I appreciate you joining us, man. What's up? What's up, Charles? I want to say thank you. Thank you so much for having me here. And thank you to Stan uh, for making the connection, for making this happen. I appreciate you. Thank you. No, absolutely. I appreciate you as well, man. And uh, shout out to Stan the Plug, man. Uh, as I said, I know anybody that he recommends is good people. And so, you know, I'm grateful that you're here, man. But, uh, you know, let's go ahead and get into this real quick, man. First yeah. off, you know, who is Gavin and what is SEPS.io? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So Gavin, man. So I'll tell you guys a little bit of just, I'll start with the professional uh, situation. You, I guess you can ask other uh, questions later, right? Mm -hmm. So six years ago, my wife had this crazy idea and she was pregnant. So I have a wife with three kids. Mm -hmm. And when she was pregnant with the second kid, she was like, uh, how about we do some onesies for our kids and stuff mm -hmm. like that? And, you know, um, I was like, all right, cool. Let's go to the store and buy some onesies. Mm -hmm. Now she's like, no, I want to make onesies. I don't want to mm -hmm. go buy them. Mm -hmm. So uh, I was working at the time. I was like, uh, I, I didn't really want to do it, but you know, when the wife says something, you got to do it, right? For sure. <laughs> so I, I, I started helping her out, like how to do onesies. So I started just researching online and I found out we, we needed a heat press and some vinyls. Right. So I uh, got her a heat press and we got some onesies and we made some onesies for our kid. What happened though, when I was uh, helping her out, I started seeing this whole t-shirt thing online like everybody's like a lot of people are using this t-shirt thing to make money mm. so i was like yo that could be a, a situation here where we can make some money mm. uh it was still an idea i was playing around with in my head because i had a good job at the time and my wife was pregnant and i didn't want to leave my job or anything like that and i didn't know what to do so uh we kind of decided hey i kind of just went down that rabbit hole on youtube uh, learning more and more about uh, what to do. I didn't know if it was going to be screen printing, embroidery, or whatever. Uh, and then I just, you know, we just went and take a class, and then we started our shop. Mm -hmm. It's a long story, and we grew it uh, to a couple, two autos and some embroidery. And last year, we sold the business, and, we, and we're doing steps.io now. That's cool, man. So you getting into the screen printing and building up your own shop, that started with just like the idea of your wife having wanted to do onesies. That's how I started, man. It really just started with that. And once we put it out, like it just started with our, just our, the people that we knew, like contacts on our phone, like on our phone and just our family member. They was like, hey, if you're doing t-shirt, why not, why not doing it for us? Mm. And then we branched out a little bit. We offered it to some nearby schools. Mm -hmm. They accepted it. Like really our first order came when we was, um, so I, what we did when I was researching everything online, right. um, I took a class, I took this Ryan at screen printing class cause I didn't know what to do, mm -hmm. right? And then I saw after that class was like, okay, I think we could do this. Mm -hmm. uh, then once, uh, then we found some somebody that was selling a used press and we got the used press. As we was moving the used press into our warehouse, that's how we got our first customer. Somebody saw us moving the press and it was mm. like, hey, can you do our shirt? Nice. It was like, <laughs> like that was our first like official like screen printing job. 
Mm-hmm. And then it just, like they said, it all went up from there. That's good. So, you know, was as you started expanding, and tell me, from the time that you started the screen printing business to when you sold it, how long of, of a time was that? What, what time period was that? I'm going to say six years. Six okay, years so from the time, yeah, got it, time got I started. It. Cool. And, and you know, where did most of your business come from? Like as far as from a marketing and advertising standpoint, you know, were there different things that you were doing to get business uh, and generate leads or, you know, was it wor- more word of mouth? Like talk to me about that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So like a lot of business owners, we struggle like off the gate because like we started, uh, we started getting, we started getting some customers just naturally, you know, by like documenting the process, throwing it on Instagram and throwing it on on Facebook. Mm -hmm. Some people came that way. Like I'll say the biggest part, like where people came in the most was like, all right, so I started attending like different. So I was like, all right, so before I started this, I knew a lot of people already. And all of these people, they either working somewhere or they're part of this group. Right. So I, you know, I did the whole chamber of commerce, thing, uh, chamber of commerce thing, attended those things. Mm-hmm. I did some networking event. Uh, I knew an event was going to be a big space and, and we kind of knew a few folks that was doing events. So we kind of connected with them. Right. So that got us. So the first part was like doing things that was not like super scalable. It was just going, just talking to people yeah. like one on one and seeing how I could help them out. Mm-hmm. Later on, we tried the digital marketing thing. Mm-hmm. And even with that, I wouldn't say it was like major success. It was like so-so, but I, the bulk of it just came in naturally as people heard more about us mm-hmm. and other people started referring to us. Got it. Got it. Really cool. Really cool. So when you were doing it, um, did the did the onesie business, you know, kind of like grow larger or, you know, did it be more just like client client work that kind of like took over? So yeah, that's actually a good question. Because when we first started, it was like, oh, well, at least um, when we thought about switching it into a business, right. it was like, man, we're going to sell onesies to a lot of moms that want to buy onesies. Right. That didn't pan out because like, we went, one of the first thing we did was like, we went to daycare because it was like daycare to have young kids. Right. And we and we pitched them, hey, can we'll do onesies with your logo or whatever. They're like, no, nah, we don't need onesies, but if you could make some t-shirts, we'll buy some t-shirts. Mm. Right? right? So and then we went to hit another uh uh daycare that was around, same story. So I was like, why are we trying to sell onesies when people need t-shirts? You know what right, I mean? Right, right, right. So that kind of like after like the first two places we went to. Just knocking on their door was like, uh, we're not doing onesies anymore. We're doing t-shirts, man. Right, right. Cause because you feel that's where the demand was. And I, I think yeah. that's dope. I mean, <laughs> you know, it's and I think that's great, man. I think just in business, period, you know, we might start off with one idea, but you know, it's like you pay attention to the feedback of the market. And if the market is telling you something else, you just give the market what they want. So I think that's really cool. Now, um, with that being said, so you started doing t-shirts. And I know you talked about, you know, going to Chamber of Commerce and meeting different yeah. people. Like, yeah. as a screen printer, what is, like, what was, like, your ideal client? Like, is it brands? Is it, like, big yeah. organizations where they might have an event? Like, what was kind of, like, the best scenario for you as a screen printer as far as client? Yeah, that's actually a great question, uh, Charles. Because I actually believe if you don't know who your client is, mm-hmm. then you don't, you don't have a business. You kind of searching, but you don't really have a business, right? Mm-hmm. Um And in the beginning, we didn't know who our client was Mm -hmm. because we tried. We thought it was going to be schools. Then working with schools kind of got a little bit difficult because of the payment. It took a long time to just get payment from school. Mm -hmm. So it was like uh, we need cash. So that's not going to work out. Right. Um, So it took a few years until like we had some data. It was like we saw a lot of churches keep kept coming our way. Okay. And I didn't understand why. It's not like I went to the church and like pitched them. Yeah. But I guess church was just naturally attracted to us. Yeah. And then we uh, just because of the community I was involved in, I'm Haitian. So there's a lot of Haitians that knows me. Yeah. So they once they knew of me, so the Haitians, they wanted to support me. You know what I mean? Right. So that so I'll say once like 
three, three years in, we figured out, all right, so our top client was churches. We had a lot of clients from the Haitian community yep. and we had like industrial companies, like construction companies, uh, folks that was like carpentries and stuff like that. Just a lot of it was the convenient factor because of the warehouse area where we was. It was a lot of those folks around. So it was easy for them to just get to us. That's really cool. That's cool. That's cool. That's cool. And, uh, you know, it's cool. Like you said, you Haitian, the Haitian community support it. I mean, it's, it's cool. It's like, you know, you probably have different characteristics about you, everybody, you know, and regardless of what your business is. And when people get to know that, know those different characteristics, you know, it's almost like like attracts like, you know, you start you yeah. know attracting some of those people as well. So I think that's just kind of interesting to hear now. You know, a lot of my audience, you know, are T-shirt brand owners. So, yeah, you know, we're yeah. people who, you know, we have brands, you know, we're looking for the different ways to print, like especially people who are new in the game. They'll ask yeah. me all the time, Charles, like, what's the best way should I print? Should I do local screen printing? Should I do print on demand? Should I do direct to garment? So, you know, for somebody, you know, who is a T-shirt brand owner and they will be looking to find a screen printer. Like, what are some of the things that they should be thinking of when they approach a screen printer? Wow, that is actually, if a brand owner have these information information going in, yeah. it makes your whole experience a lot smoother. And I'll talk yeah, about talk that. Then. Talk to us, talk to us. <laughs> so, I'll talk, I'll, so first of all, you, you have options. Screen printing is not the only options that you could use. So you could go to heat press route, you could go sublimation route, you could go embroidery route and you could go to a screen printing route. So let's say you decide to go screen printing route. Yeah. And a lot, I, I believe it makes a lot of sense for a brand owner to go screen printing route. Mm -hmm. One, you're not, a lot of time you're not doing the work yourself. You just pass right. it on to somebody else, mm -hmm. right? So, but that pass on to somebody else, if you want your experience to be smooth and their experience to be smooth, just know these things. One, like if you come in and have really good art, right? As best as you can, right? Uh, some screen printing shops, they may have the art department where they could help you out. Mm -hmm. A lot of them, they don't. So yeah. if you could get good art from the, like, outside of that, yeah. you already way ahead of the game, right? Mm -hmm. And also just understand it. you don't need to be a screen printer, but understanding the basic of screen printing, mm -hmm. right? Screen printing is involving ink going through a screen and it layers on the shirt, right? Yeah. And you put multiple, it's like building a puzzle, but on a shirt, you put mm -hmm. one ink color here, another ink color here, another ink color here before you know it, you got. So if you understand that basic, right? And also every location has to be produced a different way, meaning it takes, if you have a front print, a sleeve print, an inside neck label and a back, that's a job. That's a real big job for a screen mm -hmm. printing shop as far as production, right? So if for, I always tell screen, uh, brand owners this, all right, so you're going to sell a shirt for what? $25, $30. Mm -hmm. uh, that's what the market usually uh, for a standard t-shirt. Like if you could limit the number of imp like imprint color and also your location, mm. you if you have a front print, back print, sleeve print, and side neck label, you're still gonna sell the shirt for twenty-five dollars. Right. But your cost to produce it is up here. Right. Right. So get your art, understand production a little bit, and also just understand like your turnaround time. Like every screen print shop have different capacity. Yep. Uh, a guy that's working in his home could actually work make the job a lot quicker because they don't have a lot of jobs that they have to do right if they working out of the garage but a big shop that gets a lot of orders like yeah. you falling in line to where they are on their production so just right. kind of understand where you are you could like go with a local shop that's very small or a mid-size shop or high high-end shop all of those is going to give you a different experience that's really good man i think those are like some really good gems uh Last year was my first, you know, time operating with screen printers, right? And so mm -hmm. I remember making a shift because before that I was doing strictly print on demand. So I had no idea about the back end and printing and any of that. And so me going into that world, like you said, understanding screens, understanding the different price for colors, understanding yeah. just, you know, everything that went into it, it was, it was something else, bro. But 
one thing that I realized is as far as all the printing methods out there, to me, screen printing was king. I love the quality of it. Um, I love, yeah. you know, the 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 price of effectiveness of it. It was really good. So um, I think yeah. that's dope. Now, tell me this. You you hit on, I think this is going to kind of be a segue into Seps Dio, but Io, but yeah. When it comes down to artwork, you said, you yeah. know, for people to come in with good artwork. So what do you mean by that? Are you saying, you know, have like really just good quality designs? Do they need to have certain files that are of good? You know, like, like talk to me about that. Yeah, yeah. That's a good question. So as far as the design style, that's really on you because you, you know your brand aesthetic. You know what your customer is going to like. So that's on you to like do the creative aspect on that, right? Right. So as far as the file type, like most, like, for example, the T-shirt that you're wearing, if that was screen printed, right. that would be handled like in a using like a vector because you, you can see all the different right. uh, elements in there. So that's a vector based type of design. Mm -hmm. So a vector based type of design is usually handled on a design program, right? Like uh, Adobe Illustrator uh, or Corel Draw, right? right? Even if you don't know what those are whoever your graphic designer is, just let them know, hey, I need something that is the source file or the vector file. Mm -hmm. So when you take that file and you pass it on to your uh, screen printer, they have something that is untouched that they could easily zoom and it's, it's not pixelated. It's a lot different than something that you find, say, on the internet where it's just a JPEG. Then that, per like your screen printer is starting from scratch, right? right? Uh, when you send that to them and you wasting time and and you causing yourself um, to lose money and because they're going to charge you in order to handle that artwork for you. Right. Yeah. And a lot of the time you already paid up front. You just didn't know to ask your graphic designer for that type of file. Right. Right. No, that's that's really good, man. Um, Those are some of the things that I ran into. So. And big shout out to Stan. Stan's in the building. What's going on, bro? Many blessings, many blessings, T-shirt, sign hustle. So, um, yeah, man, I, I had this. I wish I had the design. Oh, actually, I do have it. Here it is. Let me show you. So this right here was one of my best-selling designs, and it was one of the hardest to print. Let me put this right here. I'll just put it down here real quick. So <clears throat> this right here. And you could probably tell me, you probably know just looking at it, right? So this is one of my best selling designs, Papa Bear. Um, yeah. And because of the geometric triangles and the different shading and everything, yeah. I remember taking this to my, my uh, screen printer and the very first one, they had no idea how to do the separation files. I guess that's yeah. what you do, right? So that's I remember it. I had to send it to someone else and after they got it done, they were just like, man, it's going to be a lot. Like, I've been doing screen printing for years, and it's going to be difficult for somebody to be able to do yeah. it. And then I took it to another screen printer, and they were having a difficult time. And it probably took them, bro, a good couple of weeks to get the screens right to make sure that this printed correctly. But yeah. um, I had no idea. And I remember searching on Google and Fiverr, trying to find somebody to do the artwork and get yeah. it right so the screen printer could use it. So... That was my big lesson, you know, with this specific yeah. design. So um, I'm guessing, talk to me about Seps IO and how you came up with this idea to create the business yeah. that you run right now. Sure, sure. Yeah. So before that, I'll tell you about that design that you have, which right. is something that I think your audience, it will be helpful to your audience, right? And then we'll get into Seps IO. So I'll tell you this. So the second job that I got when I became a screen printer was a design like that. Right. I'm thinking, all right, it's a design where I'm just going to be able to just do the screens and just print the shirts. Uh, little did I know that design was super complex to print right. because it had the gradients. I had to use half tones. Right. I had to make I had to use like special screens that could hold certain amount of inks. It gets super technical. Right. Right. And I struggle. Like I pretty much wanted to sc stop screen printing on my <laughs> second job. <laughs> right, right. You know what I mean? Cause like, it was just so hard. Like it, it just wouldn't happen. So if you are your brand, right? You have to, every screen print shop has different level of expertise and different level of experience, right? Yeah. Uh, while one screen print shop could do something as basic as like 
a white one, just words, right? Right. But something that's more intricate and more complex, they may not be able to handle it just because they don't have the capacity or the knowledge. Right. Right. So if you have a design like that on your brand or part of your situation, just know, go into a screen printer, you may get turned away. They may charge you more right. and all that. Right. 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 So right. let's talk that's, about that's, that's, that right? Yeah, yeah, no, yeah, that's perfect. And that's, that's just good knowledge. I think that's good, just solid knowledge and information for everybody who may be walking to a screen printer trying to figure it out. Because I had no idea, man. And, um, you know, I have another buddy who he, he does screen printing. And, um, man, it's an art form for real. Like, I, I learned that this is a real art form. And you try it and you got to fix the screen and blow it out right and just everything, bro. So, yeah. I got much respect for screen printers, but yeah, man. So, you know, you're doing your thing. Uh, you know, you got your shop. What kind of rang in your mind? Where did this idea, you know, kind of, yeah. you know, transpire from? How, how did you, how did you, uh, you know, think, okay, I want to create steps.io. Yeah. So, yeah. So a lot of the things that we do in life is all, cause like life, it, it ain't just like one straight line, right? Things happen like this. Right. right. You get a spike, you come down, stuff like this. So I grew my business I for the six years, got an auto. And one thing I've always like business, I think business is a team sport. Mm -hmm. Right. And I say that because like, especially if you're running a, a shop or a business, I, I, I always look for ways to collaborate with other people. Right. Mm. And one of the things that I did in my screen printing shop was like, I knew I, I didn't want to be stuck printing t-shirt. That wasn't my skill per se, right? Mm. You know, my skill is growing the business, training people, systems and processes. Mm. That's where I feel like where I'm at, right? So I've always wanted to uh, find somebody that could either take on the production side. So a few years, uh, a couple of years into our business, I, I heavily started looking for a partner or somebody that could just help us print. And I, I reached out to a shop that was nearby. I was like, hey, I see that, um, you know, I think I could help you out. Let's do some stuff together. Mm -hmm. And, you know, they took they took us on. It was like, yeah, let's let's join forces. Mm -hmm. So within by that conversation, our business like pretty much double. Wow. Right. So we joined force with this company. We had a couple of autos and stuff like that um together and while all that was happening our shop is like crazy busy and at the same time my wife uh had some like made crazy health problems right mm -hmm. so i'm at the shop printing like i'm super excited because like we was getting orders that we never had gotten before wow. thousand thousand piece orders four thousand piece orders it was coming in like crazy right at the same time in my life my wife's health was deteriorating. I'm at the shop printing shirts. She's calling me, hey, I need you to come home, help me out, stuff like that. Mm -hmm. So that put me in a tough situation where I was like, in the business side, I'm getting what I want, but on the personal side, mm -hmm. I really have to stop and like evaluate all this situation that's going on and not let this, uh, if I can, ha happen to my wife. So uh, I went to my partner and was like, hey, how about I sell you guys my business? Mm. And you guys take it. And it was like, yeah, why not? <laughs> yeah. It was just that. So, so, so that situation that gave me some time to like just really go inside of my mind and see like, what am I good on? What am I good at? And like, what, how is it I could help other people out? And that's how we, I, I told you before we started. So I'm actually in Mexico. So I sold my business. My wife and I, we, wish, we just went to a trip to Mexico. And while we was in Mexico, she was like, hey, I like it here. Let's just move. Mm. And we just move. Mm. Just like that. So I go back and forth between Mexico and back to my home and by, uh, my family in the States. Uh, so we've been down here. And while here, I was like, I had built a team already of graphic designers, mm -hmm. a team of customer service people. So I had these people already. So I just leveraged that. And I knew all the pain that I went through as a screen printer with graphic designing. Mm. And I also talked to other uh, screen printing shop owners and I told them, hey, uh, I'm thinking about this. Like, would you pay for me? Don't tell me it's a good idea. I'm thinking about an idea. Would you pay for me to start, like for me to uh, do this thing for you? 
And a couple of shop owners was like, yeah, like, well, if you could start this, we'll pay you. Just All right. So that's how it, I just started with no branding or anything like that. We started helping mm. them in the background. Mm. And then uh, recently we've uh, put the branding behind it and now we're helping a lot more shops. So that's how we started Sapside. That's cool, man. So, that, I mean, before we even get deep into that story, you, you said a few things that, you know, I just wanted to hit on, uh, you know, I think that would be, you know, really valuable to talk about. And so, you know, number one, you know, life happened. Um, you know, you had to tend to your wife, you tend to your family. And, um, you know, it's not all, you know, business, we have business and we're trying to achieve, achieve. But sometimes there's factors outside of that, that, you know, kind of alter our plans. Right. And so, you know, huge, huge thing that you went ahead and you pivoted and you talked about you sold your business. So how do you, we don't have to, I don't want to talk about numbers, but how did you come up in, with the number to say, okay, my business is worth this and yeah. for your, your, your partner to buy it? Like, how did that kind of, you know, what's the yeah. formula for that? Yeah. And because of the situation uh, that, so I, I strongly believe if you have a business without systems and process, you don't have a business. Right. Because then you can't recreate yourself, right? Yeah. And one of the situations when that whole conversation came up uh, that, hey, I want to get uh, sell you my business yeah. was like, hey, can you like create the processes for us? And can you actually get before you even leave, get somebody here that can replace you? Right. Right. So we put a little plan in place and hire somebody and quickly they was able to just take over my role. Yeah. And and that happened because a, a lot of the system, although it was imperfect, was already in place. Right. Like how to hire somebody, how to train them. What are the different department was pre how to receive the order was pre press, how to make a screen, how to. And we did just videos of all these things. Uh, and like so then you could just quickly get somebody in. Right. So that's the first part. The mm -hmm. second part, when it comes to the number, is it all depends where you are. Like, mm -hmm. are you like upside down or are you right side up? Right, right. And also your confident level at the time, right? Right. So all that factors into it. And a lot of the, all these are private deals, right? So there's no like public market that you could go and be like, oh, my business is kind of worth this. Right. So it's more of a gut feeling like, this is what I think it was. So right. we came up with a number and we agree what it was, and that's what it was. That's dope, man. Where'd your where'd your skill set for you to, you know, be systems oriented, you know, for your business? Like, where did that skill set come from? Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, you could call it luck. I, um, I, I'm I'm not gonna call it luck, but like. I spent a, before I worked for myself, I worked for other people, right? Right. So for over a decade, I was a general manager for a big corporation. Right. Starting from the bottom up, going all the way up to the top, just running a whole store. And then after that, running multiple stores. Mm -hmm. So that gave me a lot of just like business knowledge, right? Right. Like while I was running business for other people, then once I left running the business for other people, I... Help! I still had all those skills, you know, right, right. how to hire people, how to like, I'm like, oh, okay, so the big corporation, they did this. Why can't I try this on my business? You know what I mean? Right. So my business became this whole little playground where I was just testing things out from stuff that I remember that I did when I was a general manager for this other company. That's amazing, man. Good stuff, man. I, I, I just love it. And, um, you know, I can appreciate everything that you talked about because, you know, that's a place where I'm in, I am in my business at this current moment, right? Figuring out structure and other people and building teams, right? I'm, uh, you know, I feel like those take different skill sets. And so I think that's just powerful and I can value everything that you said. Now, let me say, let me, let me say this. Go ahead. Yeah, yeah. Say this. this this will be helpful. So, yeah. and part of this too is just self-educating, right? Right. So when I say self-educating, just making it a point to like, read books, <laughs> like read, read books, you know what I mean? Right. So the past couple of years, I'm not going to say the number, but I've read a whole bunch of books, right? right. I'll say audio books uh, when I say reading. Um, and there's a couple of books that you can read if you like want to structure your business in a good, clean way. Here's three books that you could read right now. And let's say by a month from now, if you apply 50% on what's on those books, you have yourself a real good business. Mm -hmm. The number one book, it's called uh, Traction 
-hmm. by this author that's called Gino Whitman, right? Mm -hmm. So it gives you this whole system that you could run your business on, right? Yeah. Like how to hire people, how to set up everything. So that would be one of the first book if you're thinking about traction, if you're mm -hmm. thinking about system. The second book is E Myth Revisited, right? Mm -hmm. By Mike Michael E Gerber. Mm -hmm. So this will kind of help you, like, like what type of like are you like you could be a cook. But that doesn't mean you could run a restaurant, right? right? Right. So it's a different thing, right? So, and then another book is called Systemology. Mm -hmm. Systemology will help you write your systems. It gives you like a uh, just a whole framework to use and how to like get information out of your head down into a paper, make it simple so other people could, uh, so you could pass it on to other people. I'm on it, bro. I'm on it. I think uh, I so rocket fuel and uh, and traction. I'm familiar with that. As yeah. far as like the visionary and the integrator and all those different things. And definitely, I'm going uh, to definitely tap in the e-method and systemology. So I'm with that. Everybody else, hey, go ahead and get those. He just dropped some gems on us. So with that being said, uh, Gavin, you mentioned, you know, you knew the pain points of the printing industry and what they had to deal with artwork. And I think that's where a lot of the best businesses are, you know, really birthed, Right. They birth from you. They say, you know, when you want to be successful, like solve somebody else's problem, you know, solve a problem. And that's how you re you're really able to grow and establish something that's good. And so you knew the pain of it. Um, and then you also talked about how you just got started and really start asking around and saying, you know, if I was to do this, could you do it? You didn't worry about branding at that point. Tell me about kind of like that minimum viable product, like philosophy of just getting out there before you do a whole bunch of steps and just seeing if the concept works. Yeah, that's, that's, it's important, I think, because like, no, like when you first think of the idea, everything sounds beautiful in your head, right? Right. Oh, I'm going to go out here and just, and really it hasn't met reality yet. Reality is going to be the, it's the true test, right? Like your customer is the true test. Like, yeah. Sure. So just kind of knowing that, like, so, and also just, you have to put things out for people to try it. Um, even like, I don't know if I have a perfect answer for this. Just go and try it. But here's what I did, right? What I did was like, all right, I have this idea. I went through my phone and I was like, who are other screen printers that I know? Right. I just wrote them all down. I was like, hey, I know this screen printer. I know this screen printer. I know this screen printer. This is, and then I just called them. Uh, and I'm not sure if you, uh, again, back to a book, if you read the book, The Dream 100, you just make oh, a Russell, list. Is that Russell Brunson? That's Russell Brunson. Yeah. Yeah. So you just make a list of the people that you kind of want to attack, if you want to call it attack, right? Mm -hmm. So you put that on a list and then you, hey, I got this. I'm not trying to sell you anything. I'm just trying to like, See what it is, you know what I mean? You come in like with your hand open, you know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, and that was my process. I came in and other even like the first phone call I made, it was like, I don't think you could help me, but I know somebody else you could help. Right. And then that person I called was like, bro, take my money right now because I need right. this. Right. You know what I mean? right. So that's how that's how the whole situation happened. I love it. So when when for you did it turn from, okay, I have like this concept that I'm just trying to prove out to like, okay, this is what I'm going to do. And I'm just going to go full fledged, you know, ahead with it. Like, when did that happen? Like, what was that turning point? Yeah. Yeah. Good question. So after you could call it beta testing yep, and yep. I was getting feedback from the customers, just be like, Hey, let's tweak this. I think this, but all the feedback that I was getting was more like, it's good. Just do this a little different. It was not, it was never like, uh, yeah, this is not going to work. It was, so I was getting, um, good feedback that was building up my confidence. Right. You could right. say that. So my confidence just keep building up over time. Mm -hmm. And then I was like, I thought of it. I was like, Hey, if I had something like this, when I first started my screen printing shop, yeah. I would have bought it. Like right. I 1000% would have bought it. Right? right. So that to me was like, if I try like, cause a lot of time we, I felt like I had a little bit of unfair advantage. Cause sometimes when you start a business, you was never that customer. I was that customer. And so I kind of knew what that was about. 
and how to kind of formulate it for a screen printer. Mm -hmm. So that's what I did. So I just like, hey, let's just go hard on this as best as we can. Put this out gradually. Um, make sure that our team is as strong as possible to try to handle it. And that's where we are now. I mean, no business is perfect. Even the big businesses, especially the big businesses, because they're so big. Yeah, like, yeah. They're so big. They can't be perfect. Yeah, I realized that man. when I used to work in corporate, um, you know, it's kind of like you have a perception when you're outside of them that, you know, they have everything together. Right. But yeah. it's just not the case, man. It's not. No. the case, And they're learning, they're implementing and different stuff at the same time as well. And so, yeah. um, you know, I think that's a, that's a super valuable point because I know that for sure. A um, yeah. couple of things. So. All right, so you went through, and it's like you know you're you're building this out. Tell me, yeah. I, mean, I love the branding. It looks like you know you got some colors. Uh, you Thank know, you. I love the website. Like even the branding. Like how did you you know figure out you're gonna go in this direction? I mean, it's very um, you yeah. know like it's minimalist. Uh, yeah. You know, it's it's everything is congruent. Like how did you even come up with the branding part? Yeah, yeah. So the name I played around with the name for a few. I had a I had a. Few, Maybe like that's probably like the fifth version of the name yeah. when I came to the name and then the name when I hit that step that I was like, oh, OK, this is this is good. Uh, I uh, saw the domain name was available and I was like, let me grab that. Yeah. So grab that. I also grabbed a few other domain names that I was playing around with, but I just stashed those. So as far as like, uh, oh, here's some like your user could use. Yeah. If you go to this website, it's called Coolers, C O O L. O R S dot C O, I believe. Um, so there you could like play around with different colors, right? To see what hit the eyes real good. So I kind of use that tool to like uh, get the branding as far as the color and the scheme and all that. And just I match it with my personality. I don't like anything that's like, um, yeah, that's that's what I mean right here. So if you go to coolers, that'll help you get your color scheme right. Um, and you could just hit if you just hit your space bar, hit uh, hit the X right there, hit the space bar, and it'll just go through different colors. So I just spent one night just going through this, right? Just trying to see what vibe with my situation. So you could lock the first one, say for example, just scroll over the other one, and just hit the lock. There's a little lock right there, and then hit your space bar again. And then you see what match with that one. So that's a little gem. That's how I kind of, that was some of the processes that I used to come up with the color. And I just wanted to match my personality. My personality is more simple. It's more um, like remove all the fluff as best as you can. Just put only the critical stuff. Uh, so that's how that whole situation came up. Yo, I love, I, well, I, I mean, hey, I love that website, bro. I mean, that's a... That's a pure gem that uh everybody is C O O L O R S. I've never heard of that, but I think that's an amazing tool, and that's cool that you know, like you say, you just went through, you found something that worked for you, and yeah. uh you know, you put it there. I think that's dope, man. Thanks a ton yeah. for hearing that. I think especially for everybody here, uh you know, in the t-shirt industry, that's what we do. We put colors together and try to make unique yeah. designs. So I think that's a great way to go about it. Thanks for that gem. So um, when it came ahead. to uh, sorry, when it came to copy and all that stuff, uh, there's a there's this uh, thing that's called Story Brand. Yeah. Uh, I use Story Brand to kind of help me with uh, the copy uh, that could resonate with your with your audience. So um, if you're not familiar with it, just look it up, Story Brand, and uh, uh, actually, if you just go to mystorybrand.com, and you'll be able to like get this whole little situation how to help you with your copy. <laughs> You're just giving all the gems, bro. So is Amen. it My Story Brand? Yeah, so that's the main website. But if you go to My Story Brand, yeah, it'll help you clarify uh, your brand message. You could create uh, an account. Really and all is this like a service? Like, is it people that you speak to and they have a service? No, well, what this is, this is a book. There's a book that's called Story Brand. Yeah. And this is the resources that come with that book, right? Um, yeah. And... There's some paid stuff in there, but you could use that story brand brand script for okay. free. Dope. Uh, yeah. Dope, dope. Y'all go ahead and check that out, man. My guy just dropped two big gems on y'all real quick. So I think that's fire um, family. So tell me this. Let's go back over to your website. 
yeah, yeah. Um, so you now as we go through this, right, you know, I see that, you know, you have, you know, your artwork for shops. Um, it looks like you've been featured on screen print and Samar, Ryanette, Rakoma. Like, how did you kind of get that press, uh, you know, yeah. to get seps.io out there? Yeah, yeah, man. Um, I would say all of this has been a journey, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, I, I, like I said, like in the beginning, I always believe in collaboration. Like, yeah. uh, since like year one, like starting my business, I've always looked for ways to kind of like see one how I could help. Cause I know if I plant the right seed now, even if I don't get anything now in the future, it may come into something, right? right. So uh, Ryan, had, and Ryan and, that, uh, and I, we've had a long relationships. Since we started this, we've, uh, for example, even like the t-shirt that I'm wearing right now is something that I helped them uh, formulate, yeah. uh, stuff like that. So, um, and the t-shirt name is All Made. So we've done a lot of projects together. So that's how all of these things, uh, screen printing dot, uh, screen print ma magazine, I'm one of their, uh, um, so I'm part of their board. So on a monthly, we get, we get to have meetings and stuff like that. And I help them like, uh, with different things. So that's, and Recoma, you know, Recoma that happened, I, uh, you know, they have some uh, show and I was one of their speakers at one of their shows and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. So a lot of these things are just happening over time. Yeah. Remember that whole six years, I was just building this whole up to, up to this point. I love it, man. This is cool, bro. And so for a print shop that finds out about you and, you know, it may be organically, you know, they get onto your website, you know, what are the steps that you're trying to lead them to? It looks like you have like a free trial, um, yeah. you know, you give like the process of everything that you do. So, you yeah. know, do you have a lot of people just coming in and doing the free trial first or are they booking demos? Like, you know, how are they getting signed up with you? Yeah, yeah, that's awesome. Thanks, thanks for asking that. And this is gonna, I think this is gonna help clarify some stuff. Yeah. So let's, this is what we are not. So people know what we are not. And so people know what we are. So what we are not is like, let's say you need one design um, or you need something vector real quick. We're not the brand for that, right? We are a brand for a, a screen printing shop, right. right? So a screen printing shop that needs uh, vectors, proofs, mock-ups, separations, and some custom design. They would come to us and they pick a monthly plan. Mm -hmm. They pay us on a monthly basis and then they could send job to us as they get their job. Right. Mm -hmm. So that's the model. That's the situation. All right. So if you want to get started with us, it's pretty simple. Like I say, so most people right now, they're either finding me on social media and they'll just chat with me on social media and I'm and we're doing the inbox thing and I'll get them over an email mm -hmm. and we're doing manual because the brand is early. You know, a lot of people just just like, oh, what is this? What's going on? Right. So people are more curious than anything uh, uh, right now. But uh, yeah, you could go through the website and we've had, uh, I'm say a good handful of customers that came through on the website that converted over. So That's either cool. way, you could go to the website, sign up for the free trial or hit up my Instagram that's amazing. Yeah, that's good, man. And, uh, you know, usually for those shops, like I think it, I saw it had something on there, but what is kind of like the turnaround time of the artwork? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's good. So it's there on the site, too. And there's a lot of free. Uh, uh, it's always one day. Right. Yeah. So we ask in most shops, give us a day for the project that you have. Right. Mm -hmm. And I'm, honestly, right now we're doing that way quicker than that. Right. But we just want to put that out there just to make sure the expectation is right. right. We don't want to tell you, hey, we're going to do it in a couple of hours and a couple of hours come and then we're struggling. Right. 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 We think we could do it in a couple of hours, but we'll, we'll it's, give us a day. Yeah. So that's the expectation. Uh, if we deliver early, great. If you if it's at that one day, great, too, because we mm -hmm. can tell you a friend is one day. Right. That's good. That's good. That's good. That's solid, man. And so I know that you said some people are finding on uh, social media. You know, are you uh, doing uh, any paid advertising at all to get it out there? Or is it just more a little a little more organic at this moment? Um, I'm test. I actually did the first test paid advertising this okay. week. Right. Cool, cool. Yeah. Uh, and actually, that got us two clients. That's so, cool. That's good. Yeah. yeah. So that got us two clients. So. Yeah, so it's just a test. Put yeah. a little bit of money behind it, but uh, every every other avenue has been purely just organic. 
somebody will tell somebody uh, or they'll hear me do this talk with you right now and they'll just reach out to me. Absolutely. No, I love it, man. I think that's really cool. And I just, I think the business model that you have as far as just like the monthly, I think that's just a strong business model, period. Just getting people to, you know, come back and, and stick with you for a while. Um, I think that's really cool. So, all right, man. So with that being said, you know, you up, you running. I know that, you know, you built your team. Uh, you know, you got systems in place. What is next for SEPS IO? Like, where do you think you want to take it, you know, in the next, you know, you look a couple months, six months, a year from now? Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, just do the work. Right now, we, we just got to do the work. <laughs> That's it. Work, yeah. So we put the brand out there and we put a promise out there that, hey, well, you should choose us to do your work. Mm -hmm. So next, we're just going to do the work. We ain't looking to do anything fancy. Right. Um, send, us, send us your work. We'll train the team. We'll build up the team. For right. me, internally right now, it's just focusing on strengthening up all the systems. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, we'll see where it goes. We'll That's, see good. Where it goes. That's good. That's good. <laughs> I love it, man. Well, look, bro, it's been a, a powerful conversation, uh, enlightening from so many different ways. Um, you know, I'm truly inspired, uh, you know, by what you've built, um, you know, what you're building and, uh, you know, your story in general. And so, you know, whenever I meet somebody uh, who has a print shop and, you know, they're looking to get some piece, some artwork. Hey, I'm going to definitely refer them over to you. I could I could when I had issues with this. You know what I'm saying? Maybe they could have reached out. They could have had a membership with you. You know what I'm saying? But yeah, I know yeah. now and I'll definitely be sending people your way. So for anybody who wants to contact brother and just, you know, continue to follow, uh, you know, where can they find you at? Yeah. So they could, if it's personal, just go to Gavin St. George at Gavin St. George. That's on the IG. Yeah. Right. Um, obviously you could uh, just hit up the website. So anytime you feel, if you fill out that form that's on the website, I'm seeing it. Uh, one of my team is seeing it. Right. Uh, or just send me a quick email, gavin at seps.io.com. I mean, don't. gavin at seps.io. <laughs> yeah, yeah, seps.io. Yeah, yeah, right, 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 right. Tell me last thing, IO. I've seen this on like, kind of like tech companies and stuff like that. What is the IO? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's just another, uh, like what they call it, uh, top level domain, whatever. It's just... So you, right now you could get .co.com, right, right? right. So the technology community has embraced the .io, right? right? And you'll see a lot of time where you'll see .inc, certain communities will just um, embrace that. Got it, right? actually, yeah. So it's just the .com, but it's getting very popular in the technology space. Definitely, definitely. Okay, yeah. sounds good, bro. Well, look, man, I appreciate you, family. Uh, you know, many blessings. Thank you a ton. Uh, you know, for putting your fingerprint on the T-shirt millionaires live show. Everybody here, make sure y'all go follow Gavin. Go reach out to uh, seps.io, and uh, we'll definitely be in touch, my brother. All right, Tom Stone, bro. All right, many Thanks. blessings. Yes, sir, and another one. Hey, that was a great conversation, man. I appreciate, uh, you know, all that knowledge, all the information that uh, my guy Gavin brought in. Uh, much success, uh, success to what he has going on. And uh, Stan, I appreciate for uh, you for making uh, the connection, man. I think that, um, you know, you know, he he does printing, right? And he or he had has a background in printing, and now he helps print shops. But all around, I think his story and just like the lessons that he's learned along the way can apply to us you know, as as brand owners in so many different ways. And so I just want to kind of, you know, as we always do. You know, we have our millionaire notes. I want to touch on some things that, you know, Gavin mentioned, uh, you know, number one, you know, he talked about how he even got into the printing space. Right. His wife had an idea about onesies. Um, you know, they were going down that path. Think about creating onesies, reached out to I think maybe a couple of daycares, different things like that. And, uh, you know, they basically said, hey, we don't need onesies, but, you know, we need T-shirts. And so as opposed to uh, as opposed to him you know, really trying to force his will and say, okay, let's just try to find people who wants onesies. I guess he got enough feedback about t-shirts and said, okay, look, you were just going to go ahead and switch up the whole game plan. And so I really want you to understand that as well. I think he, he talked about this a little bit later on in the interview as well, where he talked about, um, <clears throat> you know, it, 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 the customer is the customer, you know, they tells all oh, they're the ultimate test, right? 
And so we always, always, always want to make sure we keep our ears open, keep our eyes open of the feedback of the marketplace and allow that to be able to, um, you know, uh, help us figure out which direction that we're going to go. Right. There's a lot of indicators that can show us if we're on the right track or the wrong track. And it's all about paying attention. Um, with that being said, you know, he had a job at the time. Uh, you know, they ended up, you know, building that up, uh, you know, to a couple of autos. Um, and for, for those who don't know, and I wonder, I, I didn't ask him during this conversation. I don't know if he ever had a manual press at all or, you know, he just started with the automatics at first. But, you know, I've seen the manual presses where, you know, you got to put the ink in and you got the little squeegee thing and, you know, you got to, you know, pull it or whatever. So I don't know if he had one of those or not, but I know he mentioned, uh, you know, building that to a couple of autos. And then, you know, as far as like the marketing piece, right, I wanted to ask him about that because, you know, it's one thing to have a business, but it's it's also who's aware of our business. How is our business getting out there? How is our brand getting out there? So, you know, he did a lot of order, organic things. He said, you know, going to the Chamber of Com Commerce, you know, going to schools, IG and Facebook. Um, but then he also talked about, you know, kind of out of nowhere, there were like churches that were just coming to him, right? And he knew that he wasn't really promoting that. And then, you know, with him being Haitian, uh, the Haitian community supported him, right? And then I think he talked about like construction companies and stuff like that. So, you know, he kind of found like this area of customers, you know, where, where kind of, you know, it was maybe his niche, right? That he just started serving maybe more than others. And um, he mentioned as well, like, it's important to know like who your customer is, figure out who your customer is. I'm sure that there's like several uh, screen print shops out there, but I'm sure that they have a different type of customer base, right? And so, you know, there are different things that, you know, it might happen organically. You might intentionally do things to appeal to specific types um, of people in the industry or the marketplace, but know who your customer is. Um, now we kind of talked about, uh, you know, as t-shirt brand owners or shirtpreneurs, as I like to call us, what are the ways or, or the things that we need to consider as we are approaching screen print shops? And so I ended up asking, um, Gavin about that. And I think that he gave us some good insight. Number one, um, you know, when it comes down to it, you don't have to do any work when it comes to the printing. So you need to make sure that, okay. Do I want to do the, the printing? You know, do I want to have a heat press and do it? Do I want to get my own screen print equipment? Uh, how do you want to go about it, right? Um, if you're somebody like me, I don't want to do any printing. I don't want to touch it. You know what I'm saying? I respect the whole craft, but I just know what my strong point is. And so I would rather outsource it and let somebody else do it. Um, also, making sure that you have really good artwork, right? He talked about vector files. So, you know, even like if you're going to Fiverr, right? One thing is when you go to Fiverr and you get your artwork made and if somebody does some artwork for you, make sure that you get the vector file. Also, pay attention to, you know, the different types of artwork. The more complex that artwork is for some screen print shops, they may be able to handle it. For some screen print shops, it might be difficult. They just don't have the capacity or the know-how to make sure that they can print that. Right. So they might have to turn you away. So just kind of be cognizant of that. Another great thing that he talked about is when you have multiple colors, that's going to cost more. So if you have a situation to where maybe you want to print on the neck and the sleeve and the front or the back or whatever it is like that, you know what I'm saying? If you have one color, you can still get all those prints and it's going to come out a whole lot cheaper as opposed to you having maybe two, three, four, five colors, you know, for that print. So the more colors, the more expensive that's going to be. Um, also at the same time, uh, different turnaround times, there's different screen printers have different turnaround times. So you always want to make sure of that. Right. Um, I've had some, you know, screen printers that I work with, they said, Hey, it's going to take about 14 days. Sometimes there's screen printers out there where you can put in a rush order and they say, okay, maybe it'll take about three to five days. So there's different things. Right. And at the end of the day, I think that as t-shirt brand owners, it's important for us to always be building relationships too, right? With the people who print for us, build those relationships because sometimes, even though they may have stuff stated on their website, people will bend the rules for you. They'll help you out if you need to get something out faster. And so it's all about relationships, relationships. But those are some things that you should consider um, as you are approaching screen print shops. 
Um, we also went into the whole fact of, you know, uh, Gavin talking about like growing a business and training people and, you know, building teams, right? I think that's extremely important. He gave us three solid books. Actually, that Gavin, he gave us five, and it could have been more, but he gave us five really, really good resources. And I'm just going to make sure, um, you know, that I, I have all these written down so I can just go over them because these are all resources that I'm going to be paying attention to. But he talked about building teams, right, and systems and processes, and he said that, you know, he, he prides himself on educating himself, reading books. He gave us traction, right? He also gave us E-Myth Revisited. And then he also gave us Systemology. He said that, you know, if you go, you look out 30 days from now, look out from a month from now, if you apply 50% of those things, right? Uh, basically, you can have, you know, a pretty good business. You can have things in place to where, hey, if you needed to step out of that role, if you were trying to sell your business, whatever it is, you could be replaceable. And that's how we should always be thinking about like, you know, he, he said, if you don't have systems and processes in place, you don't have a, a real business. Right. So those are the things that we need to be thinking about. Go back to the whole, you know, Robert Kiyosaki. You know what I'm saying? We look at um, I forget it's, it's cut off the top of my head, but we have a uh, what's the what's it called? Y'all go ahead and put in the comments for me. Robert Kiyosaki, the, the square. What's the square called? So we have uh, employed, right? And then we have self-employed, right? And then we have business owner, right? And then we have investor. And so basically a lot of the times, right? Many of us, we sit in that self-employed, right? And what does that mean? That means that if we're not working that business, that, risk, that business is not working for us. You feel what I'm saying? And so- the whole thing of system and processes is to move us to that other grid, right? And get us into that business owner spot. And so, you know, I appreciate, you know, all the gifts that he gave us and the insight that he gave us on that. Um, and class cash flow quadrant. I appreciate you, family. Uh, cash flow quadrant. So uh, we ended up talking about that. Great information. And then one of the sayings that Gavin talked about, he said. You know, the customer is the, the the test, right? The customer is the test. Pay attention to what the customer is talking about. Now, when it came down to his website, he gave us some very valuable tools. I thought this was really cool. Um, it's coolers.com. So C-O-O-L-O-R-S.com. That's a really good one. And then another one is mystorybrand.com. That helps you with copy. So those are two really good resources that you can use. I think that is dope. Like, there are some designs that I was getting created on Fiverr this past week. And in my mind, I was thinking about color schemes, like what type of color schemes do I want to kind of rock with? And using that website can make it so much easier. I can just go through, click, hey, I like this. This color goes good with that one. I think that is invaluable for your website, your T-shirts, whatever it is that you're designing. And so um, really good information, y'all. <clears throat> if anybody um, that is watching excuse me, you have a screen print shop, go check them out, go see what they got going on. I think Gavin mentioned that they have a one day turnaround time. You know, they're working on making sure that the processes is good. They're building the team, making sure that they can solve your pain points. At the end of the day, any type of business venture, think about the pain points, even for the t-shirts that you're solving. What are the pain points? What does your customer care about? The person who you want to wear your shirt, what are the things that they fear at night? What message are you trying to portray, right? Really hitting on those things, speaking the language of your customer allows you to be able to enter that marketplace and really start getting the traction um, and growing that business. And so really good info. I appreciate my guy coming on and, you know, giving us all of this game today. Um, it was extremely valuable. Um, as I always say, inspirational, informational. And y'all go make sure y'all check them out at seps.io. So T-shirt millionaires, we about to close this out. I appreciate you rocking with us on this Friday um, afternoon. Uh, I think this is a great way to be able to close out the week. Um, if you are on the T-shirt millionaires app, continue to be positive over there. Share, um, you know, we're building that up. Everybody that's in the inner circle family, many blessings. Next week, we're going to have full brand reviews uh, Monday through Friday on the inner circle. Um, also, uh, we have some great things coming for Q4, so be on the lookout for that. 
And listen, I will see y'all next time on the T-Shirt Millionaires live show. As I always say, if you can see it with your mind's eye, one day you're going to be able to see it with your real eyes. Keep hustling, T-Shirt Millionaires. Keep believing in yourself. Bring those brands and those dreams to life. And I will see y'all on the next episode. Peace.